and welcome to my channel. I am Shannon Moore of Intentional Living and thank you for joining me today. I'm going to be making a card box for a bridal shower and I wanted it to be super blingy, glammed out to the fullest so stick around and follow along the process. All of the materials needed for this project will be listed in the description box below. Here I am starting with four 8x10 picture frames from the Dollar Tree. When you select your picture frames, you want to make sure that they are all identical. This is going to help with the decorating and making sure that everything on the box is symmetric. So what I did first was I took two 8x10 picture frames and I used my fix-all adhesive glue that I got from the Dollar Tree and my hot glue gun and I attached them to the sides. I did the same thing with the two remaining 8x10 frames and then I set both of them to the side and let them dry. Once those pieces were dry, I stood them up in the shape of the box that I wanted and I attached the two together. Here I'm going to start decorating the inside of my box now that it is completely dry. I'm going to be using my hot glue gun and I'm also going to be using um, bead necklaces that I got from Walmart. They also sell them in the Dollar Tree. I am a full-time mommy, so from time to time you will see one of my four little ones lingering around in the back of the video. I believe my husband makes an appearance in this video as well. Here I am applying gloss Mod Podge to my frame. I stress that it is gloss because if you use um, a matte or the one for fabric, it kind of dulls the glitter. So I like using the gloss Mod Podge, especially when I'm dealing with glitter. And I'm just gonna coat the frame as much as possible so that I can apply a nice thick layer of glitter to my frame. I will repeat this step to all four sides. After the Mod Podge has been applied to my frame, I'm going to take my silver glitter and I'm going to sprinkle it on the frame. I am adding a very heavy amount of glitter when I am doing this part because as I stated earlier, I wanted it to be very um, shiny, blingy. So I add lots of glitter to this portion. I've set my four picture frames to the side to dry that I just mod podged and glittered. And I'm moving on to the base of my box. It is another 8x10 picture frame. I removed the backing of that frame and I put it to a foam board, traced it out, and cut it out to give the base of my box a little more of a foundation. On the back of the picture frames, 
there were also silver metal pieces that were used for hanging the picture frame on the wall. I removed those pieces and used the hole to place in my ribbon for the pull handle to open the box. The box will open from the bottom. I applied Fix All Glue and my hot glue gun and attached the backing of the picture frame to the foam board piece that I cut out. I chose to lay my ribbon flat. It can be left like it is. I chose to lay it flat. This part is optional. I found this duct tape in the art section of the Dollar General. It is silver glittered and I just pulled the paper piece from the backing of it and laid it down flat on top of my board. This was a much quicker fix than my podging and glittering it. And I just wanted to give it a try. Honestly, I like how it look, looks, but it does not beat the Mod Podge and Glitter process. It was faster, but the finished product was not the same. I am still pleased with the outcome of this project though. While completing this process, I noticed that the glitter was literally falling off. Um, and I did not want there to be glitter everywhere at this event. So I took my Mod Podge to seal in the glitter that was on top of the tape. I gave it a generous amount. And then I set it to the side to dry. Now I'm going to be working on the top picture frame. Now this picture frame, I am unsure of the measurements of this frame. Um, I'm gonna guess that it was a 10 by 10, but I am not sure. It didn't list anywhere on the packaging, and I'm just guessing. I do know that the frame was equal on all four sides. Um, I'm just not sure of the measurements. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking my ruler and I'm cutting out the insert of where the cards will be dropped down inside. I cut it seven and a half inches long and one inch wide. And that should be more than enough space for any size card to be slipped down inside of my card box. I used the foam board again, same as I did the bottom piece, traced it out on the board and cut it out with my X-Acto knife. I attached the board to my backing of the picture frame with fix all glue and the hot glue gun.
Here I'm going to repeat the same process that I did on the 8x10 frame for the base of my box, applying the glitter duct tape and my podging it to seal the glitter. All right, everyone, I'm very sorry that I lost the footage to me putting this box together. I'm gonna to do my best to explain it as best I know how. So after I have my podged and glittered my frame completely on all four sides, I set it to the side, let it dry. I came back, I applied another coat of my podge to seal the glitter to my frame, set it to the side, let it dry. Once it was dry, I laid it on its side and carefully placed my glass for each picture frame through the box. I laid it down flat on the picture frame, applying thick saw glue and my hot glue gun to attach it back down to its frame. I then used my diamond bling wrap, cutting out two rows that were the length of each four sides of the picture frame. I did this to ensure that I was covering up any visibility of the dry glue that was holding the glass to the picture frame. I did the same thing to the front of each glass piece on all four sides of the glass with one strand or one row of the diamond bling wrap. I also used these gems that I got from my local Michaels. They were $8.99 for I think 5,000 um, crystal gem pieces and I used my 60% off coupon so that was a nice little deal there. So right now what I'm doing is I'm just decorating my box to my liking. I know you guys have noticed the little splotches where there is no Mod Podge glitter. Um, I'm not too concerned about that because I will be covering this space with my bling wrap so we're going to cover that up in just a second. Also down here I used some of my crystal gems to decorate the bottom of the box. That was a last minute add. Now that it was a bridal shower, I thought the diamonds would be nice. So here I'm just adding my bling wrap to the trim of my box to decorate it and to cover up these little splotches where there there is no um, glitter on the frame of the box. This is the part where it is important to make sure that all of your frames are matching when you purchase them they all need to be identical this way when you're decorating it's easy for you to make all of the sides the same you don't have any issues with the boxes fitting together everything fit together very nicely here I used four rolls of bling wrap and went around all four sides of each picture frame As you can see, the base of my picture frame has dried. I have applied, I have placed it back inside of its frame and used the fix all glue and hot glue gun to attach it to the bottom of my box. I, there, because it was an eight by 10, there was space left in between. So I used that space um, to decorate with, I don't know what to call them, <laughs> crystal gems. They're really beautiful. I really loved working with them. I don't know where these come from. These were gifted to me by a bride uh, when I did her wedding. There were a lot of things that she had left over and she let me keep them. So this was one of those products. So I'm just using my hot glue gun putting a dab of it on the bottom of my jewel and attaching it to the empty space on my box, on the base of my box. This piece is also detachable from the box because remember this is how we open it. So do not attach the gems to the base of the box and then to the frame of the bottom of the box if that makes any sense, because then you won't be able to pull the bottom tab out.
Now we're going to go back to the top of our box and since the other side where I put the glitter duct tape and Mod Podge has dried, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do my Mod Podge and glitter method right here. I would have continued to use the duct tape, however I ran out. <laughs> so back to Mod Podge and glitter I go. It was nice using the duct tape, but this will always be my favorite method. I just like the consistency, the flow, the fact that it's all the same. There were lines in the duct tape. Here's my husband. There were lines in the duct tape after I finished um, using it, so this will always be my favorite. When you are doing the Mod Podge and glitter, you want to make sure that you, first of all, reuse your glitter. Recycling is best. Um, but you want to make sure that you, after you apply the Mod Podge and the glitter, you give it time to dry. And then you apply the top layer of Mod Podge so that your glitter doesn't fall off your project. Very important to let it dry before you apply that last layer of Mod Podge otherwise you will move the glitter and then it will leave streaks in your board which is what I did on here you will see it but I'm not too concerned about it because it's going to be the bottom of um, of the top of my box in other words it will be on the inside you won't be able to directly see it unless you flip the box totally upside down Here I'm still just randomly decorating as I'm turning the box and seeing different things. I used my metallic silver bead necklace again to dress up the sides where the base of my box meets the 8x10 frame that my crystal diamonds are attached to. There was not a very clean flow between the two so I used my beaded necklace to give it more of a clean finish. This is the square picture frame that I spoke about earlier that it's going to be for the top. So the foam and backing piece that I cut the slit in for the cards to go in through, that will essentially go inside this frame and then be attached to the top of the box. Again here I'm doing my glitter Mod Podge method and I've already applied the glitter in the Mod Podge, it has already been set to dry, so here I'm just applying that final coat of Mod Podge. And as you can see, it is a generous amount of Mod Podge because I don't want to have any glitter all over my tables, any glitter all over anybody's hands that touches the box. So I'm giving it a good seal of Mod Podge so my glitter stays put. When I am done with this step, I will sit this to the side and let it dry. Now that everything for the top of my box is dry, I'm going to be putting it together. So the backing that is attached to the foam board will now be going inside the picture frame. I would also suggest that when you do this, cut the foam piece smaller than the backing that you took out of the picture frame. I had an issue with getting it to fit inside of the frame after I applied the foam board to it. Maybe it was too thick. I did get this foam board from Walmart, so the ones in Walmart are thicker than the ones in Dollar Tree. Um, but cut it smaller so that it will have a better fit inside of your picture frame. Once I figured out my fit, made sure that it was nice and snug, I took my hot glue gun and I put it inside the picture frame and then applied the glitter backing into the frame. I used the metal pieces to hold the backing inside and pushed them down to hold down my backing piece while the glue adhered. Now 
I'm going to be taking my Pixar glue and hot glue gun to attach that piece that we just finished to the top of our card box. After it is attached, give it time to dry and then you can decorate. Now we're going to work on our bow for the top of the box. I got this ribbon out of the Dollar Tree in the Christmas section around the holidays time. I'm going to lay it out and I'm going to cut more than what I think I'm going to need off this roll because I can take from it, but I cannot add to it if it's too short. So here I'm just laying it flat, cutting off what I'm going to use, and finding the center of the ribbon. Once I've got the center of my ribbon figured out, I'm going to be folding my ribbon as though I am making a breast cancer symbol. So I'm just crossing them on the wings, I call them wings. Once I've got that even along across both sides, I'm going to take where I've connected the two and the very back of the ribbon and put those together. I'm going to use my fingers and just figure out my placing, make sure that each loop is even to one another. And then I'm going to crunch up the bottom, crunch up the center of my ribbon. Now that I've got my ribbon perfectly placed for the bow to my liking, I'm going to take, normally I would take a zip tie, but I couldn't find another zip tie. So I am using this piece of wire right off of the back of my bread in the background. <laughs> I am giving my ribbon a nice tight pinch, wrapping this around so I've got the shape that I want for my bow. I'm going to take some black ribbon. This ribbon is sheer, so I'm going to wrap it a couple of times because I don't want the green to be visible. Um, and then I'm going to also be adding bling wrap on the top of that just so that, again, my entire box is glistening and blinging and shining everywhere. So I'm always going to be placing my beads of glue at the back of my bow. So be cautious of that when you are placing because you don't want big chunks of um, glue beads in the front of your ribbon. The back of my ribbon is going to be attached to the box so you won't even see that glue there. Just wrapping my ribbon around my bow to cover up that green metal tie or wire tie. Because the ribbon is sheer, be careful not to burn yourself because it's going to seep right through, that hot glue is going to seep right through that ribbon. So be careful of that. Now that I've got that placed on there to my liking, I have my bling wrap here. And I'm going to cut off a piece of it. And this was a good project, guys, for me to use my scrap bling. Whenever I do a project, I always save the smallest amounts of bling wrap just in case and I end up doing this entire project with scrap bling wrap that I already had at home. I did not open a fresh pack of bling wrap which I was very happy about. Very excited that I finally got to use all that that was building up in my craft bin. So I just cut out the size of the bling wrap that I wanted. I believe it's three rows and I attached it starting from the back of my ribbon and taking it around the front and then attaching the other end to where I began at the back of my ribbon. So 
So now I'm just pulling on my ribbon to give it the shape that I want. And one thing that I noticed about this ribbon was that the silver pieces were falling off like a lot. So back to my Mod Podge I went, laid my ribbon down, took my Mod Podge and sponge brush, and I applied it to the ribbon. I was very pleased with the way that this turned out. I did this on a whim. I was like, well, if it doesn't work out, I have more ribbon. I can just make another bow. But it worked out great. It sealed in all the little glitter pieces. They were not falling off after I did this. And it made the bow stiffer. So once I applied the bow to my box and I maneuvered it to the shape that I wanted, it stayed that way, which I was very pleased with. All right, you guys, so now is the fun part where you get to decorate as you see fit. Try to keep your look cohesive, so whatever you used on the bottom of the box, use it on the top of the box as well, so that everything flows together nicely. We used a hot glue gun for this part of the decorating, and we also just stuck our bow right there on the top with hot glue. Super easy, guys. Be innovative, be creative, use your imagination, make it just what you'd like it to be. All right, you guys, that is it. Check out this beauty. I am so in love with this box. I love the way the ribbon is falling. I love the way, no matter what angle you look at it, it is blinged out, glammed, and just shining and sparkling. You can see it two miles across the room. I am so in love with this box, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me today on Intentional Living can't wait to come to you next week with a brand new project hope you guys enjoyed it don't forget to like subscribe and share with your friends and hit that bell so you get the notifications when i'm posting a new video please comment below and let me know what you thought of this project and what you'd like to see next until next time thanks for watching god bless and good night